Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. It is a weird recording day because it's Monday, and I just feel weird because it's the middle of the day and I should actually be working. I feel very strange too. This was like the only time we can make it work with our schedules this week. If we miss a Thursday, it's really hard to like make up the recording, I've realized. And I don't know, why did we miss this last Thursday? Because I went to go see my friend's baby and it was like oh, this yeah. whole thing. And like, I should have just kept, I should have protected Thursday the way that I normally protect Thursday. But I don't know. I think it's, it's just different when you change the vibes. Like it is, I, I was fine recording, like Monday is fine. It's just like getting my mental, my mental space isn't like prepared, even though I said I would do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel the exact same. It feels very strange, but here we are. Here we are. So um, we're doing the whole trying to do our topics first thing still. So you guys are going to have to for sure give us your feedback on whether you like this approach or if you want us to like kind of get you warm and ready before we dive into things, you know, like lube you up or do you want us to just dive right in like we're doing right now? So we'll do it a couple more times and then yeah, give us your feedback as we're going or wait until we give you a poll Either way, we need to know. So (laughs) on that note, now that you have not been lubed up, (laughs) hey, we're talking about toxic relationships, toxic environments, toxic whatever you want it to be. Toxic anything. Toxic situationships, but not what toxic situationships actually means. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like this is a really good topic and I'm really excited to like dive into it and hear like what you have to say about it all because yeah, I just feel like it's a really good topic. I think toxic anything is a weird topic because it's an overused word. Like I keep thinking in my head when we have like these overused buzzwords, like what was the word before that? Like, what were we calling it? And I think it would have probably just been like a bad environment or a bad relationship or a bad something. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Toxic would probably be said here and there, but toxic is like, all you have to do is Google toxic in a million. It's just like toxic. Everything's toxic. So um, it randomly hit me the other day that I wanted to talk about this and I was really fired up for some reason. And it would have been great if we recorded that day because I had to like really sit and be like why the hell did I want to talk about that but (laughs) I have a lot of things to say still (laughs) so I'm going to start first with toxic relationships and okay first I'll just tell you what that means because that's what I do but on basic terms toxic relationship means any relationship that makes you feel worse rather than better and where your well-being is threatened in some way emotionally, psychologically, or even physically. And so basically, yeah, the basic term, like anything that makes you feel worse rather than better. Um, And I think that falls into friendships. I think that falls into marriages. I think it falls into your dating life, your kids' relationships, parents, families, families, like in-laws, work, friends, work, people, like anything, like anything is considered a relationship. And I think a lot of times people assume relationship just means like your spouse or whoever you're dating. Um, And then sometimes they'll like highlight friendships, but not very often. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have really gone through the ringer with getting rid of toxic friendships and it's freaking hard to end a toxic relationship of any kind but especially friendships, because I feel like friendships is just kind of a different and a deeper level than most things. But yeah, I don't know. It's relationships are really hard and it's really hard to like recognize the signs that it's toxic for you. I think what's interesting too, is like, there's no way to identify like which which one trumps the other, you know, like some people are really good at getting rid of toxic relationships when it comes to family. And some people are really good at doing it with friends. And some people just don't even have friends because they don't even have the capacity to deal with that, you know? And like, there's no way to decide which one, who you keep. But I think a lot of people, like they have, 
they've already determined like I get that this is like a toxic relationship at with my family but they're not going to do anything about it but when it comes to friends they're always going to do something about it and I think that people usually fall somewhere where they know exactly what types of toxicities they're going to allow rather than like I have a boundary about any of this and I think for a while you and I were very much like these are certain ones that will allow and these are certain ones that just like won't go and I think now we're to the point where it's like no matter what you are (laughs) we're not putting up with the bullshit like it could be literally anything and I think it took a lot of work for us to get to that point and I think that's why it's been so hard is because we don't we don't like bend on our boundary there it's like this is the type of life I'm trying to have and if you can't bring the type of energy and positivity into that that I would expect to have my own inner peace then I I can't have you here and I think a lot of people don't identify that yeah I totally agree and it I was one of those people because I hate ending things. I hate ending relationships with people. And so I let a lot of shit slide when I shouldn't have. And I still do. I still have a long way to go. I have for sure gotten better, but I would just let a lot of things slide so that I wouldn't have to, sorry, my, if you guys can hear my door shaking, my cat is like sticking his paw under my door and shaking it. Um, anyways, I would just let a lot of things slide and then I would put myself in a bad situation because I would hate being around the person, but I would just be like, whatever, it'll be fine. I'll just deal with it. And it was just making it life a lot harder for me. Well, and like, not only that, but I was thinking too about like toxic marriages or relationships. Like people are so willing to just ignore that they're in that situation and like run from it they're more willing to go out with friends or distract themselves or find other ways to occupy their time instead of actually just dealing with the toxic relationship. You know, like they're running from it or they're avoiding it or they don't want to deal with it. And they will truly just fill their time however they can so that they don't have to deal with the fact that they're in a toxic relationship or part of a toxic relationship. And I don't know. It's just crazy to me because I think I see it happening. I for sure have done it. There was times when Wally and I were not doing well and I would for sure like whatever I could do to fill my time so that I didn't have to be home, I would. And like, it took me a long time to like, be like, all right, listen, you've got to stop doing this. You have to actually deal with the problem. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I actually had a situation a long time ago. Um, One of my friends had a really toxic marriage And so she would always be like planning girls nights. Like it would just be like every weekend, girls night, girls night, girls night. And her, her husband would never be involved. And that caused a problem in my relationship because I was constantly ditching Tony to go hang out with this girl because she didn't want to be with her husband. And so it was like making it a double toxic situation in my life that I felt uncomfortable that like her husband was never around. And then I was having to tell Tony like, oh, we're not going to hang out tonight because she's, she planned this for us to do. And so it was just like a slippery slope that she was involving me and another girl in that we didn't need to be involved in her relationship problem because she just wouldn't deal with the issue. Yeah. That's actually something that when I was like thinking about toxic relationships that like came to my mind is there's such thing as they don't have to be like a bad person, but there's such thing as like people aren't okay being alone or they're like not wanting to face their problems. And so they will latch on to whatever they can and put you in a situation, which then creates that toxic environment, which I still haven't gotten to that part of it yet. But like that then creates that toxic environment where they they just can't be alone. And they're like, however, I can like be with somebody and planning something with you and filling my time with you all the time. Like, I'm going to do it because I just can't handle the fact that I'm alone or I'm insecure or you're hanging out with some, like so many different things could be going through their mind, but then that then put you in that toxic environment and that toxic relationship. And you're not even realizing it because you think you're just like there for a friend when really this person has like a different motive behind it. They probably don't even fully realize sometimes that they have that motive, but they are doing that. And it happens to us all of the time. Like not us, it like, it does happen to us, but I'm saying like, it happens to everyone all of the time. Like there's sometimes where like, I for sure I'm like, okay, I love vacationing with Taylor and Tony, 
does this make us toxic? And I don't think it does because like we have a good relationship, you know, but I do wonder sometimes if people look at us and they think, wow, they have such a weird, like they can't even like handle being with their spouses alone or whatever, you know, like I think sometimes I get insecure about what other people are thinking that they think we're like those people that can't vacation or do something with just our family. You know what I mean? Like, and I think I sometimes worry that my family judges me for that, that they think that I'm doing this, like I'm always vacationing or including a bunch of friends because I can't handle like being alone or I don't want to be with these people by myself. And really it just is, I like a good ass fucking time. Yeah. And no one, no one really gives me the credit, I think, for that. I think deep down they're probably like, all you do is care about your friends and you don't want to spend time with your family or us alone. You just want your friends. And it's like, no, I want to have fun. That's all yeah. I care about. Yeah. <laughs> No, and that's important to like realize because if you are somebody like Shelby and I that likes people around all the time, it is something to like check yourself and be like, am I doing this for because I like people around because I like to have a good time? Or am I doing this to try and get away from something, which in our case, I don't think so at all, because even when we vacation together, like there's still pockets of time that we're doing stuff with just like you're just with your family. I'm just with Tony, like it's not like we're constantly up each other's assholes the entire time that we're on vacation together, but like, it is important to really realize those things in yourself of, are you needing this for fun or are you needing this because of something else? But like also maybe a little bit, we kind of want to be together the whole time, but we allow separation for the sake of separation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like when I'm separate, I'm like, wait, when is Taylor coming back? <laughs> She's still asleep. No. What? <laughs> no, but I, I don't like to, I like, I don't want to like go about my day sometimes when we are vacationing and like do a bunch of stuff. If you're not there, because I'm like, wait, like she needs to be here. Like we need mm -hmm. to be having fun. Yeah. But it really is all like fun to me, but they're like, I think it's just important for people like know your why when you're doing those things, understand why you're over including or under including under including is totally a thing too like I under include people sometimes because I'm protecting my environment I'm protecting myself from a toxic environment and so that's one of the things that I do to like make sure that I can protect my peace and not be in a toxic environment but it's not and it's not because I don't like someone it's just I'm trying to not have a toxic environment um which leads me to what is a toxic environment everybody basic terms the same thing as a toxic relationship, but they happen in a space rather than by a person. So basically any environment that makes you feel worse rather than better, makes you feel threatened, makes you feel uncomfortable, scared, whatever it, it's just a space rather than a person. So, and, but this is important to dive into because I am a person that like really attaches to people, places, and things. And so if I like, for example, after my affair, there was places that I couldn't go because it would remind me of the past. And so in my mind, I'd be like, oh, that's a toxic environment for me. I can't go there. There is a certain point that you have to push yourself to be triggered or whatever and go to an environment in order to heal. So like for me, there were certain places that I was like, I can stay away from this place for like six months, but then I need to slowly start bringing it back into my life because I need to start healing this. Like I can't just never go to Texas Roadhouse again because that was his favorite restaurant. Like I need to slowly start bringing that into my life so that I can heal that part of me. So it's important to differ, differentiate. I can't say that word between if it actually is toxic forever or if it's toxic for right now, but you need to heal from it. And I think it's important too, that you also identify like, is it a toxic environment or are there people in that environment that make me feel like it's a toxic environment? Like give credit to whatever the toxicity is. Don't like, don't overgeneralize and be like, oh, I hate going there because it's so toxic. Why is it toxic? Is it because of the actual environment? Is it because of the people there? Is it because of your fucking self? Like you also can be toxic. So you have to identify like, what the toxicity actually is, don't always place blame on someone else or the environment until you know whether it's one of them. And if you can't identify if it's a person or the environment, it's probably you. 
<laughs> yeah. And that takes like a, a big smack in the <laughs> face to realize that maybe the toxic person is you. <laughs> well, and like, I would for sure say like, I know for a fact when I have been in unhealthy places and I have like not been my best self, I could be somewhere and be like, oh, I just don't like hanging out with this person. And it has nothing to do with them. It was that I actually didn't want to be around these people. And so I was more toxic. I was like a lesser version of myself even more. And I had to like identify like, well, actually like that's fine if they are that way. Like I'm actually being a worse person in that environment and that makes me toxic. Like I can't just blame everyone around me for how they're acting and not take any blame for myself. You know, like if I'm being similar or I'm making a situation more toxic, that's literally a me problem and I should work on myself. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) totally agree. And I have also been the toxic person many times in my life. So (laughs) I totally agree. Um, okay. So I have a couple of things that you can look for in a relationship or an environment that are very, very like basic red flags, I guess I would call them. Um, gaslighting is a huge thing. If you are noticing that you're gaslighting or you're experiencing it, that is a toxic environment and relationship, or you are toxic. Um, breaking boundaries if you don't like something or it's a boundary for you and that's being broken over and over again that's toxic mistakes aren't allowed so if you feel like you can't make a mistake because you'll be judged or you'll get criticism or just negative backlash that's super toxic you can't have opinions and a feeling and feelings that are your own which kind of ties into the gaslighting thing um that's for sure toxic lack of trust either you don't trust them they don't trust you um and you don't want to be there or around them or that space like so those are like the very quick things that you can think of of like okay this is a quick reminder or red flag of like is this toxic am I toxic or are they toxic like there's kind of you have to like ask yourself all three of those because again not everyone around you is just the toxic problem like you can also be toxic Mm -hmm. um But I think like another one of those things that's like a buzzword is gaslighting. Like gaslighting is such a buzzword and such a trendy like topic right now. And like, I find myself saying these trendy things a lot and I'm like, God damn it. Just say, I can't have my own feelings. I can't have my own opinions. Like stop just using the buzzword, but it's really being hard. It is. It is. And it, it's hard because with things like TikTok and everything, these buzzwords get thrown around so much, like, especially the gaslighting and narcissism, like it Mm -hmm. just gets thrown around. And it's like, does anybody even actually know what this means anymore? Or are people just saying it to say it because they heard something random on social media and they're like, oh, that person's gaslighting me. That person's a narcissist. So it's really important to actually know and understand what these terms are, because it is so easy to just let it be a thing without even understanding it. Well, and I think that that's what's so wild to me is I always, like when I see those things on TikTok or whatever is like trending with those words, I always just think like, where's the self-awareness? Like people are consuming these things and pointing so much blame in other directions, but are most of them actually having any self-awareness or reflection of like, is this actually me? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I think that's what bothers me sometimes it's like these buzzwords are making it so people are just looking outward and blaming others rather than dealing with like their own thoughts actions and feelings and that it drives me crazy when that happens um yeah. I have an insane list of behaviors and identifiers for toxic relationships or <laughs> environments so I'm not going to read all of them um I'll put them on a post for you guys though that are just like yeah because it's just so much there's so many things that like to its core toxicity is so huge (laughs) um okay I'm gonna start with one of my favorite favorite things which is probably why I was so triggered and wanted to talk about this is (laughs) unsupportive and two-faced behavior I can't with that type of shit like 
you know in your gut and you know when you're around people or you're seeing things when they're supporting you and when they are being two-faced like it is just it's just there it's written all over the walls and especially (laughs) being a female this is a very big behavior for girls and it's so annoying because I feel like with as much self-development work as Shelby and I do, we can spot it out so easily when people are insecure or whatever it may be. And so there are definite people that are like, oh, they're definitely talking shit about us. And it drives me crazy as well. Like I, I can't stand it. If you have a problem with somebody, just like, don't associate yourself with them. Don't be the toxic person around them. (laughs) Well, I think that's what like puts it into that two-faced mentality where when they can get something from you or they can learn from you, they want to, they want something that you have, like anything, like it ties into so many of these behaviors or identifiers. And it's like, if you can come to somebody and take only what you need, but then not be supportive or two-faced and talking like mad shit, it's just so unhealthy. Like, And I always have to remind myself, like, this is a them problem. This is not about me. And most of the time I find it really like comical. I'm just kind of like, wow, I actually feel really bad for you that me just living my regular life triggers you to this level, but it does hurt. Like it does cut deep. Sometimes you're just kind of like, why the fuck are you like, I actually care for people. Like I really care for people that I interact with. And when I notice that this behavior is creeping in, it's just kind of like, man, I don't know what I've done that made you feel so insecure with yourself, but I I don't think it's cool what you're doing. I think it's really messed up. And it always makes me so bothered that people do this, especially females. Like being a female is so hard anyways. And I will clap for anyone. Like I want everyone to have their ultimate success and be the best version of themselves. And when they cut people down I'm just like you're better than that like stop Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Um, Yeah. another one that is a behavior or identifier is uh, lying and not being truthful and this one also triggers me because if you have people in your life that cannot be open and honest with you that is a huge red flag and something that you should be like, why are we even like wasting time? Like time is so freaking precious. Like if you really think about it, like Dave Hollis just died, you guys. (laughs) People are dying all over, but that one still is like messing with my mind. But (laughs) um, like your life really is so precious. And like, why are we wasting time at a social event or like hanging out and taking time away from like what we could be doing if you can't even be open and honest with the people you're spending time with, like, I don't, I don't have time for like the fakery bakery. I don't have time for you to just like only tell me some things about your life. I just don't. And if you can't like tell me regular ass shit that's going on in your life and you feel like you have to hide from it because you don't dare tell me, we should not be hanging out. I don't totally know. agree. Yeah. Totally don't follow agree. me. Don't talk to me. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. Like, it's just so strange to me. And like, and maybe it's just because I'm so open and honest with who I am. Maybe that's why. And I, I have to remember, like, I can't expect everyone to be that open and honest, but I don't think I expect everyone to be that as blunt and honest as I think I would be. I still expect them to like, tell me what's going on in their life. Like an actual conversation, not like, oh yeah, everything's fine. Works great. If you, if those are your responses, (laughs) go find new people to hang out with. (laughs) Um, If you feel like you have to cover up for somebody or you're constantly there for them and they are not there for you, those are huge behaviors and identifiers. If you, covering up is like a huge one. Like that's so toxic. That one's super uncomfortable to me. Um, But I also feel like if you, if you feel like you're doing more or you're giving more or you're constantly like reaching out to these people and you aren't getting anything in return. Like that's your gut being like, Hey, this isn't going well. Like you need to figure, like you need to like work on what that means for you. 
Um, we talk about this one a lot too, because Taylor went through it a lot is if you feel drained or dreadful when you are hanging out with them or about to hang out with them or go somewhere, like if you feel drained afterwards or you're dreading going and you're just like, Oh, I don't want to do this. Don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's that's like a huge, huge thing for me is if I am pay attention, like if you feel exhausted after seeing someone or going to an event and not just like exhausted, cause like you just went to an event. Like if you are so mentally and emotionally exhausted from the energy of somebody else, that's a really big sign to look further into your relationship with them. Spouses included. If your spouse makes you feel like that, you need to look into that, dive into that a little bit more and figure out like therapy or whatever you need to figure out. Energy drainers of people are huge. And that's a big thing to pay attention to. And like, you'll also not only just feel like, like less energy, you'll also probably have like a negative attitude. You'll probably be more negative. You'll be moody. You're not going to, you don't really know why you're moody. You're just kind of like, uh, I'm like not happy right now. That's mm-hmm. a huge sign um and like I like that you brought back in like the relationship like with your spouse and stuff thing because I think that's a huge thing like if you feel like you can't like spend time with them because it just makes you that uh feeling that's a big thing like Mm -hmm. don't ignore that um I also was thinking too like if you are in a relationship or friendship and you are constantly moody like that's that's the number one red flag and if you're ignoring that like you need to figure out what that means it could be your kids it could be your dogs it could be your house it could be like your husband or your whoever you're dating like whatever but like if you're in a bad mood it could be your job like there's so many things like your mood is a huge indicator of how toxic your environment is. And if you're happy and you're usually like pretty good, you're probably in a good spot. Yeah, totally agree. That's like probably one of the biggest things I noticed. Like when I left my job just barely, that was a huge thing. But my job, even before that job, I remember like at one point telling Wally, like, I am so done every single day when I come home. I'm not happy. I'm not in a good place because I'm just so annoyed with my job. I have to find a new job. And then I got a new job. And with my job that I just left, like I knew I was super unhappy. I'd been unhappy for a long time. And it's the more space and freedom I'm getting, the more I'm like, holy crap. Like I can't even process how much that was weighing on me. And I knew it was, but I didn't fully appreciate it until I was finally away. And so if you're feeling that, just know like once you get that space, you're going to feel a million times better. Like without a doubt, I know it's scary, but it will totally happen. But you have to identify what's causing that and then fix it. Um, One that really fucking pisses me off, and yes, I'm using the F word for it, (laughs) is if they embarrass you in like public or they're like trying to publicly shame you, judge you or make you look bad or anything like that around other people, that one is a huge, huge, huge problem. And mostly about them, like Mm -hmm. 98.9% of it is about them. And maybe a tiny bit of it is you, but that's like, again, a very, I'm saying 98.9% it is a them problem. And it's so terrible. I've been in so many situations like that and it makes me fucking angry. Honestly, if you are doing that to people, just stop. And like, if that, if this, whatever thing is really bothering you that much about that person, tell them privately, there should never be a situation that you're in a group of people and you're calling that person out. This goes for kids too, because I have seen people like call their kids out in front of a ton of people like, oh, my kid did this. Ha ha ha. Like what an idiot or whatever. Like respect to the people that you are around. And if there's really that big of an issue, pull them aside privately. And if you can't pull them aside privately and tell them it's probably not that big of an issue. So stop doing it in front of people. It's rude. It's immature. It's stupid. Just stop. 
Well, I'm like, I've seen people like spouses doing it to each other, like in group settings where they're just like airing some bullshit to everyone. And you're just kind of sitting there like, that oh my is so God, rude. what do I do? <laughs> yeah, like, and it's just so rude. Like, you're sitting there like, I cannot believe you're like literally saying this about this person in front of these people, even though we're not strangers. It's still just like, oh, mm-hmm. that is really uncomfortable. And honestly, it really does take the person that like, if it's happening to you, you really should stand up for yourself and say something. I will not like, I will give Jaden so much credit. I remember when he was very first living with us, I would like, I use social media sometimes I think to like, as an outlet to like deal with my emotions. And I would like post something where he was like acting out or he had done something or I was like annoyed or hurt or anything. And I would like, just post something vague on my social media about like when your kid does this or something like that. Like, I don't even know. I don't even have like an example off the top of my head. And every single time I would do that, he would message me on Instagram when he would say, please don't say this about me, take it down. And I'd be like, oh shit, that probably doesn't feel nice for him. But it took him actually like, which again, huge kudos to him for standing up for himself and Mm -hmm. saying that. But like in my mind posting it, I didn't realize it was hurting him. I didn't realize it was like, making him less than and it was and I had no idea and it's like we do those types of things all the time and our frustrations can come across that way and it can really hurt people's feelings and it's also making other people start judging them and so I think it's important that you if that's happening to you there's been times when it's happened to me and I have not said anything I'm just like hurt and I'm upset and I'm just like whatever this is about them what a dick and then I probably just like stop hanging out with them but I should be better at just being like this is not cool. I think it's actually really rude and it hurts my feelings, but mm-hmm. it takes a lot of balls to do that. And I it apparently does. don't have very many. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, just swallow my but, spit. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Um, it does take a lot of balls, balls to do it, but it is important to do to like stand up for yourself. But Mm -hmm. it is something that you shouldn't even have to stand up for yourself because it shouldn't even be happening. Like, I think it's just rude. We're not in high school anymore. Like stop doing it. (laughs) And I think it's so hard because a lot of times people might not even realize they're doing it. Um, it might just be their like dickish personality and it doesn't, it takes somebody standing up for themselves for them to identify that. And I wish I could be that person more often, but I'm just not, but I encourage everyone listening to be that person because it's really good for you to do. (laughs) Um, Another one that I really, really like, and I've definitely felt this myself before, is if you feel like you have to impress them to be around them, whether like what you're wearing, how your house looks, what your car looks like, what your job is. I felt that when I've been around people before, and I know for sure people have felt that around me, which makes me sad because I don't, I don't ever want them to feel that way. And I know some, like when I've identified it with myself, it's for sure just my insecurity. I know those people aren't putting that pressure on me or judging me. I put that on myself. And so it makes me sad that like, I've had people in my life that for sure, have that insecurity around me. I I don't want that for them, but I know that that's like a them problem. I can't really do much about that, but I know how it feels because I've done that. You know, like I've been in spaces where I'm like, well, now I feel like I'm literally worthless and I have to step up my game. What, but then I like take the flip side and I'm like, all right, challenge accepted. How can I level up my life? You know? And then I don't let that turn into a negative. I don't take it out on them. I don't, whatever. Or maybe they just aren't the people for me, but I don't let myself beat myself up over it. I can get insecure about it and then I'll like figure it out and move on. But I think that if you're feeling like you have to impress, that's a huge identifier that it's either toxic or you have something you need to work on. I totally agree. Um... If you get upset by things that they're doing, things that they're saying, um, their behaviors, if you're just having like an upset feeling by watching their stories, like we've talked about a lot, like stop following them, stop talking about it, like roll it, roll it off, roll it off your shoulders. Is that what it's called? Let it roll off your shoulders. Yeah. Roll it off your back or I don't know what the exact saying is. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know geography or sayings, (laughs) but I think like. There's times when I'm like, 
I have to identify with myself like, okay, this is actually bothering me. Why is this upsetting me? What kind of upsetting is it? And if it's upsetting me in the way of just like, I actually just don't like this person, then I do something about it and I move on. But if it's actually like upsetting you in a way of like, you just constantly are feeling upset by this person that you need to figure out what that upset means, because it can mean a lot of things, but usually it means they've done something or whatever that's just made you hurt by them or annoyed by them and you don't want to be around them anymore like your body's literally telling you like you're upset that's a sign and if they're like let's say for example their instagram stories make you irrationally angry that you're just watching the story (laughs) the whole time and you're like oh my god i hate this person they're driving me nuts blah 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 just fucking hide their story that's a thing i've had to do that recently And that's completely fine. I didn't want to deal with all the drama of deleting them and blah, blah, blah. So I just hide their Instagram story. And if like, there's something I need to look at on their Instagram, I will actually go to their Instagram, type in their name, watch their story. But seeing their story every day was just literally driving me insane. And so I just had to cut it out. Like, just don't even watch it anymore. Nobody is forcing you to be around people that drive you crazy you're torturing yourself. Like there are steps that you can take to get rid of that in your life. And I would also add to that, like the flip side, if you have put up a boundary and you've like kind of had this tiff with somebody or you're trying to like not really have each other in your life, like that person in your life, like take them off of yours. Like there's been plenty of times where I've had people that are just like, kind of dipped out on my life and I'm like well you don't get to fucking see what I'm doing anymore and I remove them and I take that power within myself because I shouldn't have to always like wait for them to do it to me or cause like a thing if it gets to that level where it's like this has happened and I don't want you to know what I'm doing you should get rid of them too you should take them out of your life and like take control of your own happiness because you can, like you have the ability to do it. And you guys, even if they're family, it's okay. I have my grandma, my uncle, my aunt, and my cousins all blocked from seeing my Instagram story because they would watch my Instagram story. They would have a problem with something I was doing. They would call my mom and it would become this whole thing. And it's like, why do I even have them on my Instagram if they're just bitching about me the entire time? So yes, they are family. And yes, I do get comments of, oh yeah, I don't see your Instagram anymore. I don't see your Facebook anymore. There's a reason for that. And so even if it's family, it's okay to cut them out from your social circle and just see them at family gatherings. It's okay. Yeah, Um, which actually leads me to the things that you can do to help get yourself out of a toxic relationship or environment. Um, and just like you were saying, take action or control. And I think that's a huge one. If you are having a toxic situation like that, especially take control of it and remove them so that they can't talk shit. Like I for sure have done that. I remember when I went to my bachelorette party, I had my cousin lose his fucking mind because I was wearing a dress and I was carrying around like one of those blow up dolls when we went to the club dancing and he lost it on my family. Like she's such a slut. I can't believe she'd wear something like that. And I'm like, Hey, we're not even friends. I don't even know you. I clearly don't go to church. Like, who are you to judge me? And Mm -hmm. I just, I took him off of my social media. I haven't ever put him back on. He's never said anything to me. I've never said anything to him. And it was done. Like when you have someone that says something that they don't need to say, and you don't actually really have a relationship with them, get rid of them. You do not need to have excess people in your life. All that's doing, like, remember our conversation we had on the episode about your circle of people in your life. Cut that out, get rid of it. The more people you have around you, the less you're likely to receive all of the blessings and dreams and hopes for yourself. Yeah, and Um, this, this plays in with boundaries too. Going back to just like the example about my grandma, my uncle, I love spending time with them. Some of like my happiest memories in life are, you know, at dinners with them or whatever, but my boundary had to be that they could not see who I was on social media. They could see the person that I would be around them, which was not swearing, not wearing quote unquote skimpy clothes, whatever, like just enjoying their company, but having that boundary in place. And so I think that's just important to note that like, 
just because you get rid of somebody on social media or just because you don't see someone in person, whatever it may be, you can still have them in parts of your life in the way that you choose to have them a part of your life. I totally support that and agree with that 100%. <laughs> um, another thing you can do to help get yourself out of situations like this is kill them with kindness. That one almost eliminates them on their own. You know, like, if they're meeting you with some negative bullshit and you're just constantly kind, they will be like, all right, I'm on fate. Like I'm unfazing this person. I need to go find someone else that I can like fuck with because it really is. It really is a them problem when it's that point, when you're just kind back, even though you're being met with some like nonsense, it's, it's just going to piss them off and they'll eventually go find someone else to make miserable, to help them feel better about themselves. But then you kind of get rid of it yourself. Um, I also think that it just like, it helps you not stoop to their level, which is another one of staying true to yourself. If you don't like the behaviors that are happening to you, then meet them with kindness, have a little bit of empathy and realize it's not about you. It's more about them and stay true to who you are as a person and it will all work itself out like the more upset you get about it the more emotional you get about it it's just going to make it worse and then you'll have this constant like ring around the rosy of like you said this you did this like blah 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 and you're constantly being triggered by each other over and over and over again and it just won't get better there's been plenty of times in my life where like I've been hurt I've been sad someone said something to me and I'm like what the fuck was that about and then I'll stop and I'll think and I'll be like, okay, this was them trying to make me fix the problem for them. Or this is them trying to make this my problem rather than their problem. Or this is them taking something out on me. And that's really sad. And I'm going to move on and have a boundary. Like it can be that quick and you don't have to get upset over it. You don't have to like let it ruin your life. You can just be like, identified all these things and now I'm out. And there's nothing wrong with that. But staying true to yourself is the best way for you to not let it get you like worked up. Um, which I think falls in line with chasing happiness. So I think kindness, chasing happiness and staying true to yourself are all really good things that can help you get out of a toxic situation. Chasing happiness has been one of the best things I have done for myself. I think my word, my word for the year was like joy a couple years ago. And like, I was just trying to find anything I could to bring joy into my life. And it really does shift things for you. It really does. It helps you identify toxic relationships and environments much faster. Like if you're like, I'm not enjoying this, you immediately know, great, I got to figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. So chasing happiness really, like if you're focused on it, it will help you identify a lot of this really quick. Like I'd be hanging out with people and like, I'm not enjoying this. And then I'd be like, well, all right, here's another friendship I got to cut loose. <laughs> um, communicate. This is a huge one, which kind of comes back into the whole, like you should have some balls and say something, but you should really work on communicating the situation to the people. Like it can be, I'm the queen of it, of like, you, you don't want to be in my life? Fuck you. You don't get to watch my story, you know? Instead, I should really like stop and communicate with that person if I value that relationship, if I want something to come in the future from that relationship. And sometimes even after you communicate, it's not going to get better because they need time and time sometimes can like heal those things. But um, trying to figure out a way to communicate when you're noticing red flags or behaviors because like I said maybe sometimes people don't even realize they're doing it like it's same with any relationship if you're feeling upset and you really like my husband for example I would have to communicate to him if there were things that were going on in this thing let's say he's being unsupportive I need to communicate to him that I'm feeling that way and mm -hmm. if he's receptive then everything's great if they're not that's what then continues that relationship that's toxic or that environment that's toxic so figuring out how to communicate it you like you have to it's just a thing <laughs> it really is easy. communication is so important in, in any relationship and i can honestly say that every single friendship that i have ended I have communicated my reasons why, because I think communication is so important and I never want to be the cause for somebody staying up at night being like, 
I wonder what happened or I wonder this, I wonder that. Like, I think communication is a very big and important piece of this topic and pretty much everything in life, to be honest. I will say, I think for both of us, we need to be better at communicating sooner. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think by the time you and I communicate a situation, especially me, (laughs) we are communicating it a little bit too late when tensions are already high and feelings are already hurt. Instead of dealing with things in the moment, we usually try and like slow it down figure out a get we we problem solve so that it's easier for us to get out of the situation because mm-hmm. we've already determined we want to get out and instead we haven't communicated sooner and then by the time we do communicate all of these things it's like it's just not great so Here's i know my I'm two really page long text <laughs> about all the things that are driving me nuts good luck figuring it out i totally agree with that I do communicate the reasons why, but I definitely wait too long to communicate those reasons. <laughs> I think for me, I usually wait until they like fuck something up majorly. And then I can be like, and this is why we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly we have some things that we need to work on. This is why self-reflection is so important, you guys. But I will say that we're not the worst at it or the best. I'm I'm just saying we go through this too and we could be better. And I think we are getting better. I think that we Mm -hmm. have, I mean, no one's an expert at ending relationships or identifying how to get out of situations like this. And it does really take like practice and learning. And I think we've grown a lot in figuring that out. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll just continue to get better. Um, the last two things I have on getting out of a situation is finding a support system that can help you get through that tricky situation and avoid those situations as much as possible. So I think a support system is great because you need that to have the confidence and courage to continue having your boundaries in place or to help you feel like it's okay that you're doing this because you're not alone. Like support systems are a huge thing. There's been probably plenty of friendships I would still have if I didn't have someone like Taylor that I'm like, well, at least I have you because no one wants to be alone. Mm-hmm. Um, And then avoiding, I think that one's just huge. Like I, I probably over avoid to be honest. What do you mean over avoid? Like I, I avoid toxic situations like way more than I should. Like if I know it's even a slight bit toxic, I'm like, nope. Yeah. I don't want to do it. I don't like this person not doing it. I could see that for you. I feel (laughs) like I embrace toxic situations too much. I feel like I stay in them way longer than I need to. And that's what causes me to completely like blow up. So I really need to find like a healthy balance of like, when do I stop doing this? Or when do I continue to like test my patience or test my limits? Because sometimes testing your limits is good. And sometimes you do need to do that. But I definitely stay in toxic situations way longer than I need to. I need to avoid them a little bit more. (laughs) I think I for sure do that sometimes too. Like, especially when it comes to like a family situation, I tend to let toxicity happen for the sake of my kids. And that is one that I have tried really hard to identify lately and also work on figuring out when I should cut that situation or communicate sooner or whatever I need to do. Because once someone crosses my kids, that's when they're completely shut out and I can't go back into communicating with them at that point because I'm just done. Like, so I have like this weird blurry line where it's like, I'm protecting, I'm keeping a situation because I'm trying to protect them because I know they value a relationship, even though it's hurting me and probably still hurting them. And then it like flips completely and I'm like done. Mm -hmm. So that one's like a huge one that I still struggle with and will continue to struggle with probably forever. (laughs) It's really hard when family gets into the equation because for some reason, everyone's just kind of conditioned to think that like, just because they're your family doesn't mean like, that means that you just let a lot of things slide. And that's a big thing that I really had to learn in therapy is like, 
yes, family is important, but there are some things that like you don't need to let slide and it doesn't matter that they're family. And I don't know what in our lives has created that thing in our head that like family is the only thing that matters no matter how toxic or whatever they are. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I cannot tell you how many times I got told, well, you have to talk to your dad. He's your dad. And it's like, it doesn't matter that he's my dad. Like if he is toxic in my life, he's toxic in my life. And I have every right to put up that boundary, but it was all the time. Like he's your dad, he's your dad, but it's your dad. And it's like, who cares? It doesn't matter. He's a guy, he's a person. So family is a rough situation, but it definitely is something that needs to be done sometimes. I will say too, now that like you were talking a little bit, I think I actually don't struggle with it as much when it comes to family. I like it friends and family become my family. So it's like the family I've created. So sometimes it's a friend and sometimes it's actual family members. And if they have become the friend, the meaning of like friend family to me, like they're our family at that point, mm-hmm. that's when I hold on a little bit too long. So like if they've made an impression in my kid's life and my kids value them, it's hard. Like if I've had friendships where it's like my kids really enjoy playing with their kids, or I've had friendships where my kids really like them and they've been to all of their activities and they are around us all the time. That's when I'm kind of like, I don't know how to get rid of this situation. I'm just going to kind of like deal with it for the sake of not cutting people out of my kids' lives. Cause we don't have a ton of people. And mm-hmm. then I start to realize like, okay, this is actually not doing well for either of us. Um, but yeah, it's hard and it's not easy, but there's a lot of toxicity and toxic relationships and environments. And I think the more you can start working on figuring that out, the happier your life is going to be. Totally agree. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's check in. How was your week? Um, It feels confusing. I don't really know what has happened in the last week. It feels like, I don't know why but that's how it feels. I do have one big important thing to say. Mm. I have been catching up on, so the new season of Jersey Shore Family Vacation, I think might already be out, but I'm still catching up on the last one. And I was watching it recently and Vinny, (laughs) so apparently Vinny never gets a birthday celebration. Like they just, completely ignore Vinny's birthday all the time like they will be hanging out like three days before Vinny's birthday and celebrating so someone else's birthday and that is toxic a, friends yes there's a whole entire episode where he finally creates a Vin day and so like he makes the plans and everything to celebrate his own birthday and makes him do all of these things and I was dying during this episode you have to watch it because sometimes it makes me think that People in our lives feel that way a little bit, but I know that it's not true because we for sure would celebrate them if they ha- like had a birthday near any time that we're hanging out, 1000%. And it just like made me laugh because the way that he's hurt, I think sometimes maybe our friends or family can feel that way because Wally. they don't <laughs> they don't create situations the way that we do that are like celebratory for their birthdays. They just expect that to happen. And I'm sorry, like if you have an expectation, you should make that happen for yourself because you should not put expectations on people. Um, but you have to watch this episode because it is so freaking hilarious. And he does this whole entire thing. And he like, there's all these flashbacks that MTV shows of like times when it's like been his birthday or almost his birthday, like a day away from his birthday, all these things. And no one will celebrate his birthday. And it's so <laughs> sad. I will totally watch that. Cause that is hilarious. We are definitely guilty of that. Wally's birthday is like, what is it? Like two weeks before yours, a week before yours? Yeah, it's exactly two weeks before mine. Okay, so exactly two weeks before Shelby's and his birthday always gets overshadowed by me and Shelby being like, okay, what are we going to do for our birthday? And he's like, "Uh, (laughs) hi guys, what about me? So Wally's the Vinny in- (laughs) He just, I'm telling you, people need to claim their birthday, claim your weekend, claim your trip, claim your party, like book that shit in advance, get that on the calendar, Um, especially if you're close to Leo season, you should make sure that you're on the calendar. (laughs) I would 
we are taking up the entire month of August, especially this year. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that was something that I needed to point out. And then the only other thing I have is I cleaned out my closet because I need to buy new clothes for work. And I knew that I couldn't justify buying new clothes for work unless I cleaned out some of the stuff that I needed to clean out. And I've been needing to do it anyways, because I'm going to fucking Vienna, everybody. And I need new work clothes for this trip. And I'm going to Brazil and I need new work clothes for that trip. So traveling I'm abroad so is jealous. stressing me out. <laughs> I am truly like the green jealousy monster that you get to go on these trips and I cannot come. Well, I actually was thinking, I have been writing in my start today journal, my 10 things, um, ever since I got it, that I traveled the world with ease and I think it might be coming to fruition. I'm not going to awesome. jinx anything yet because I don't feel like I can cross it off, but I have been saying that like I travel the world with ease and this is pretty damn easy right now. Minus the fact that traveling abroad is giving me a lot of anxiety about like the different power things that you need being on an airplane for 16 plus hours. Um, what to wear because I don't want to look like like in Vienna they don't wear cut off shorts like I wouldn't wear them anyways because I'm going on a work trip but like if it was warmer mm -hmm. I would probably would have packed those but I like looked it up and like women don't wear jeans and they don't wear cut off shorts and I was like but what do they wear skirts or like linen pants or like they're just okay, wearing, like men I think it's getting more common for them to wear jeans but like I was like, well, I need to like make sure I like fit in and I'm not this asshole American because I don't want to be that person. But mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I think things like that are really starting to stress me out. So it's consuming my brain of like, how do I show up and not be that American that came to town? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is that is something that I wouldn't have even thought about, to be honest. It's stressful because then I'm like, A, I need to make sure my work outfits are on point because I'm about to show up head bitch in charge. and also, what am I going to wear afterwards that doesn't make me like, again, that American? Like, yeah. I want to make sure that I'm like fitting the vibe and that's really stressful. Yeah, I I wish I knew anything about Vienna to help you, but I didn't even know that this place even existed until you told me <laughs> about it. So <laughs> also, not only am I stressed about that, I'm so stressed about this plane ride that's 10 hours long before I get to my first stop. Like, I don't know what that is like. I don't know how I'll go to the bathroom. I already have a problem going to the bathroom on airplanes. I heard that the food is not great and that you should sign up for a vegan meal because you get like mystery meat, like, and that you should pack extra snacks because you'll be starving. And all of these things are like overwhelming me and consuming me because I do not want to be uncomfortable on a plane for 10 hours. I already have really weird plane anxiety at different times. And I don't want to be starving. I don't want mystery meat. That's going to make me have to go to the bathroom that I already don't want to go in. And like, also, what the fuck do you do for 10 hours? She is not even joking about her bathroom anxiety on an airplane, you guys. <laughs> it literally, if I go to the bathroom on an airplane, she gets anxiety for me. And I'm like, it's fine. Like, it's tight <laughs> and it's awkward. And like, the flushing is very stressful. But like, it's okay. And she like, will be like panicked until I come back to my seat. And I'm like, it's just a bathroom. So I don't know what you're going to do about the bathroom situation either. And hopefully you don't have to poop because that's a nightmare. Yeah, I don't know. I think I need to figure out a lot of things within the next month for sure. And also I have the irrational fear that I'll go to the bathroom and I'll walk out and the plane is being like hostage situation and there's like guns everywhere or I'll flush the toilet and get sucked down the hole like I know it's not going to happen but that's literally what stresses me out I've gotten better I've gone to the bathroom a couple of times but it's hard anxiety is a bitch <laughs> man it plants weird ideas in your head and you can't get them out and they're so stressful and they're not even like they don't even make sense those movies, you know, those motherfucking snakes on a plane just really stress you out to go on airplanes as an adult. True. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, my I week, love that song. I just got back from Canab yesterday. Tony and I started going to the balloon balloons and tunes last year. 
And it is like one of the highlights of my entire year. It is so fun. I'm obsessed with hot air balloons. Shelby dropped this giant bomb on me that she's ridden in one multiple times because her uncle owned one. And again, I'm very jealous of her <laughs> because I really want to ride in a hot air balloon. And I feel like once I ride in one, I'll have to get one because I feel like I'm going to enjoy it so much. So yeah. Um, if you've never been to Kanab, Kanab is actually the shit. It's really fun. There's just like a lot of outdoor things to do. They have really good restaurants. Like it's just a really cool vibey place. So yeah, they also have a ton, a ton of crystal shops on the way down. And we stopped at every single one of them. And I just am obsessed. I have to show you, I got you one of these because it was so cute, but it's like a rose quartz little moon. My camera's going oh, off. Oh, he has blurry. a face. I know it's so cute, but they just like have the coolest crystals there because they're right by the mines. And so, yeah, they have a ton of crystals. They're super cheap. Tony and I got a geode that we can open ourselves. We have no idea what's inside of it. So that's very exciting. And yeah, we were just very lazy and it was great. I really love that tradition that we've created. I would be very curious to know your thoughts after going on a hair, hot air balloon. Like, I really want to know what you think of it once you do it. I think they are really cool and magical to watch. Being in them is pretty fucking scary. Like, Really? It looks so peaceful up there. I think it sometimes can be and maybe it's because we live in Utah and our wind and weather is so crazy but there's definitely been a few times where like I've been in the hot air balloon of my uncles and like the a wind gust came and we almost like got completely like you if you have any ounce of like weather that's not predictable you're fucking going down and it you could burn like there's freaking live flames in your thing and you could just burn up wait a second the basket can flip you out? Yes, you can. Like, this is what I'm saying. I want to know what you would actually think being in it because movements adjust how, like, anyone moving changes how that, like, it's just a basket holding you guys in this giant balloon. And, like, if the wind pushes the balloon or, God forbid, your fucking air or your fire stops going, your whole entire hot air balloon is going down. Okay, that is a little bit stressful. I will give you that. I did not <laughs> think is. that the basket could flip you out because what would you do? You're right. You're right. Uh, that is scary. I don't know. I've I've just been in some sketchy situations before in a hot air balloon. And that's why I'm like, they're cool and all. A one-time thing for sure every now and then maybe I would do it. But like, I don't trust a bitch. I don't want it. But they are very, very magical to watch and seeing them like yeah. against the red rocks down in Southern Utah is so freaking beautiful. I could just watch them all day. Yeah, I think they're super pretty. Um, but yeah, it's wild. I think they're really cool. We really should go to that one down by blending. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I would be so down to do that. Um, I also think it's really cute that you guys like make that a tradition. Yeah, it kind of started like we didn't even plan it like Tony got it for me for Christmas because he thought that I would like it. And then we went and they do it right after Valentine's Day and we don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. So we were like, we should just do this every year for Valentine's Day. And it's been so fun. So I like it. I think it's super cool. And I always like watching your pictures from it. Yeah, it's really fun. The drive sucks, though. I mean, we did make a lot of stops yesterday, but it took us like eight and a half hours to get home yesterday. And that's very, very annoying. Yeah. I mean, you already live further than most people. So it like adds that extra layer. We used to go to Canab a lot on our way to St. George because where I used to live, we would have to go that way. And I think it's a really cute town. It is. I love it. And they have this restaurant that has the most amazing lavender martini. And I just need to know how to make it because, wow, it's amazing. Did you take a picture of the ingredients? Yeah, but they have like a homemade lavender syrup. And I don't know how to homemade lavender syrup, but I really need to know how because it is so good. I feel like you could Google it and it's probably really easy. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and figure it out because when you guys wow. have like the lavender season in Logan, you should get some and make some. 
Yeah, I definitely should. And I definitely, sorry, my camera keeps going so blurry. Um, I definitely am going to, because I dream about that martini. It is so, so good. Dang, I really want a martini now. I know. We need to like go to Twigs and get martinis again. French 75s. Mm. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, anyways, I think that that's all that I had going on this week. So should we do our do, 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 ask champs, drink champs? Yes, ma'am. Hey, um, so this one is, let me pull it back up. Dear Champ Street Champs, what do people think of adult proms? Are they cringe or no? Uh, absolutely. I think they are cringe, but I would go to one. I would not host one myself because that's a level of cringe that I cannot bring myself to, but I would for sure attend someone's if they hosted it. And I like that person because really? I would just think it's so fucking funny to watch everyone. I wouldn't most, I wouldn't go because I want to go for myself. I'd go because I want to people watch. Yeah. People watching would be prime there. Um, I think they are extremely cringe. I would not attend one. I was never much of a dance person in high school anyway. Like I only went to two of my proms and I was just like, we were there for a second and then left, but doing so as a 30 plus year old adult is so cringe. And I am sorry if you're into this, but I have severe secondhand embarrassment from it. Um, Cash Valley just had one over Valentine's day. And I saw like a bunch of these pictures being posted And I just was dying. I can't, I can't get behind it. If you think it's cool, do what you think is cool. Do not listen to my opinion, but there's no way you would ever catch me dead in an adult prom. Okay. But question, did you not used to go to things just so you could laugh about it? Like, and I think that's where I'm coming at it from is like, I used to go to people's parties or like situations because I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. And I have to go so I could see this firsthand and laugh. And then I would leave. Like, I wouldn't stay the whole time, but I, I want to experience it for myself. And maybe it's because you have secondhand embarrassment that makes you not want to. I would for sure be embarrassed, but I would love to go watch it and see it myself and then be like, a, I'm taking some snacks and I'm out because I just I've always been that way though I've always been like I'm totally go down to go watch a dumbass situation so I can laugh about it and then leave but the problem is is you would have to participate you would have to buy a dress or rent a dress whatever you'd have to dress up for it like you'd have to get the like wrist things the flower things and like the flower like the boys thing, maybe my date those didn't give me one some people aren't some people at prom didn't get them because their dates sucked. Well, I don't know, but my mom always would forget to buy those. And she would be like rushing to all the different flower shops the morning of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. I can't believe I forgot. And I was an asshole teenager. I just wouldn't even remind her. And so she would just be like panicking all over Salt Lake City, trying corsage, that's what it's called, trying to find one of those. And I just could not do it as an adult. Like it would it just gives me really bad secondhand embarrassment and I could not participate. I would for sure just show up to laugh and then leave and eat the snacks. But also I would just, I have my prom dress downstairs. I would just throw that on and I'd be like, I'm here taking a snack, laughing my ass off and then I'm leaving. But I actually like really am here for all of the dances. I can't wait until Henley is that age because Jaden was just not having it. And I think it's so fun and so cute. My niece is actually coming up here to go dress shopping soon. And I cannot wait to go. Oh, really? Is that why they're coming up? They'll be here because my other niece has a dance competition in Heber. But my niece, my other niece needs to get a prom dress. So like, I'm for sure going to that. See, and that's where I guess I need to make things more clear. I think it's great if you're in high school. Like, I think... If you're into that, you should live all those memories. You should get the dress. You should get the corsage, like all the things, but it should stay in high school. You should not be doing it as an adult. (laughs) I agree. But you did say that you didn't love going to dances. I was not much of a dance person. No, I am. I happy that I went to a few. Of course I am because it is an experience, but like I wasn't 
sad if I didn't go. I think they're super expensive. They can be. I think people are trying really hard to make them not expensive anymore. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just like the whole thing. I like people go to the dance. They don't really actually stay at the dance. It's just like the whole thing that goes into it that I like. I like an event. I like a theme. And I love when people like get dressed up in dresses. I think it's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry to be the asshole. Don't go to an adult prom, please. <laughs> yeah. If you guys have one and want to invite me, um, I will for sure show up, but just know I plan to for sure laugh about it and think you're dumb as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, you guys, I think that's our episode. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram, champ string champs podcast. We are filming a lot of reels. We are also going to be filming more about our CBD um, from our sponsor, Pure Spectrum CBD. Champs 15 gets you 15% off. It is the real deal, you guys. So make sure you check them out. Like, share, rate, and review all of the things. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Peace out.